today, I want to talk about how Ken Griffin has just been caught bribing members of Congress. I want to explain how he used this to his advantage during the 2021 GameStop lawsuit, but how the market is still going to crash as a result. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I'm going to dive straight in with the key information. So. Chris Rose, who's running for a position at the Senate, tweeted saying, why does it feel like I'm the only one running for office that's calling out the counterfeit or fraudulent shares practice that is known as naked shorting, when all those already elected demand answers from Gary Gensler and the SEC? I think Chris makes a great point with this tweet. There are some people already in the Senate and others running for Senate positions that are currently calling for an investigation into synthetic shorting. But obviously there are so many other politicians that let these crimes fly completely under the rug and ignore them at all instances. But so why is there this disparity? Why is there some people in the Senate that are convinced naked shorting absolutely does exist, but others that think it's never happened and never could happen? Well, as RJ tweeted, he said it's because your colleagues profit from it and are actually paid by Wall Street thieves who profit off the backs of everyday Americans. Now, The Wolf has actually come with some receipts of exactly who in the Senate and who in Congress Ken Griffin has bribed. He tweeted saying, obviously, these people at the Financial Services Committee will never call upon the SEC, Gary Gensler or the Department of Justice to investigate such crimes. And it's not just synthetic shorting, spoofing and many more underhand tactics that are being used to destroy businesses and the retail investor. This is that on February 18th, 2021, Ken Griffin testified before the House Financial Services Committee to address his role in the GameStop controversy. But it says that Ken Griffin has donated money directly to four Congress people that are actually on that committee and that were actually in that meeting. And those four people included Republicans French Hill, Andy Barr, Ann Wagner and Bill Huizenga. So Ken Griffin has been donating money to these specific Republicans to obviously fund their campaign and likely their lavish lifestyles as well. And that's likely why Ken Griffin was not charged of any crimes during this 2021 GameStop lawsuit and why he continues to get away with lying to Congress to this very day. It's because members of Congress are quite literally in Ken Griffin's back pocket. And this is likely why there's not more people in the Senate or at Congress that are calling out Ken Griffin's crimes. And also while there's such a split of people that do think synthetic shorting exists and others that don't believe it does at all. I do think there's definitely a conflict of interest in having the SEC and having members of this House Financial Services Committee effectively being funded by the hedge funds they're trying to regulate. That's basically the equivalent to workers in the prison system effectively having their salaries paid by criminals and prisoners themselves. There would obviously be a massive amount of bias in the way that prisoners are treated if the guards are effectively being paid by those very prisoners. But as Bigham's tweeted, he said, get ready, my friends, because the market is still going to crash. Finance Lancelot tweeted saying when the debt ceiling passes, the Treasury must create a market for trillions of dollars worth of new Treasuries. He said they can't do this with the stock market making new highs. If the stock market is making new highs, there's going to be very little appetite for trillions of dollars in new Treasuries because obviously money will be deployed in the stock markets and not in the bonds and Treasury markets. So what does JP Morgan Chase and BlackRock have to do to create demand for these government treasuries? They crash the market. There has been some rumour of the debt ceiling deal potentially being soured at the last minute to effectively crash the market. This would effectively be something that makes Joe Biden look even worse and effectively gives a way for the government to issue these trillions of dollars in new treasury bills. Also guys, be sure to sign up to Moom with the sponsor of today's video by using the link down in the description below. You can currently get up to a whopping 15 free shares, which is worth tons and tons of money. Moom is also very easy to use. It's very clear and concise, and there's also entirely free commission free trading. And funnily enough, the CEO of Barclays is basically saying the exact same thing, saying that banks will continue to tank the stock market. The CEO of Barclays has said that banks will likely continue to tank the markets as banks look to adjusting business models and selling portfolios to cure themselves. Basically, these banks that are struggling are going to be selling off giant portions of stocks that they own, of treasury bills, of bonds and of mortgage portfolios as well. 
anything to effectively get tied up money and assets out of the door and to get pure cash back in the door. He added that the acute crisis has passed, but that many banks will be forced to change their business models, including possibly by curtailing lending. He said, I think as a systemic risk, it's over, but what's not been solved yet is what the funding model that will work going forward will actually look like. Many of these banks have a bigger asset problem than they would like, so they're looking to sell portfolios and they're looking to cure themselves, and what that will mean is less lending. This part here about selling portfolios is effectively what's going to trigger the next leg down in the market crash. If these banks have to sell off giant portions of their stock portfolios, it's going to reduce those asset prices. And also less lending means more price drops in the markets. And Finance Lancelot has added by saying that it's actually a misconception that the banking crisis is over. He said the two credit facilities created by the Fed in March are actually still rising. And he said that interbank lending is effectively reliant on Fed interventions right now. He said the banking system is not stable and they know it, and that it wouldn't take much to push it back into chaos. We can see that both the bank term funding program and also other credit extension facilities are actually still increasing and have been increasing since March of 2023. These are obviously those new facilities that were created by the Fed to effectively provide short term financing to these banks. But it seems that this financing isn't really being too short term and actually more money is being drawn down every single week. So it seems the Barclays CEO may be right in saying that these banks have a bigger problem than they would like, but wrong in saying that it's not a systemic risk. Because to me, it still definitely looks like a systemic risk if these borrowing facilities have not only not reduced, they've actually continued to get even larger. Now, I also wanted to talk about a recent FUD article written by Bloomberg about AMC and how these shields may actually be exposed in court. Markets with May tweeted saying, seriously, Bloomberg, do you even fact check? It's absolutely ridiculous. She said, Adam Aaron, can you ask them to retract this nonsense? Mike Leonard from Bloomberg wrote saying that most of the amateur investors have indicated they're against the reverse split, although a majority of the relatively small number voting on the original conversion plan actually approved it in March, before the settlement. Markets with May said, did you even bother to look at the voting results or did you just take a poll and send it to the short sellers? Because obviously 72% of the common AMC shares represented voted yes. Ignoring those Antara shares, ignoring all of those eight votes, 72% of AMC holders still voted yes. And that 72% clearly shows that the majority of voting shareholders approved the proposals and were for the reverse split. And I think the reverse split as a whole has really gone further to expose the AMC shields. Because you can basically summarise the AMC shields in a nutshell in these four photos. These shields cry that AMC is tanking and say that you need to sell your shares because it's squoze already. And for some reason, these shields care about your money and want you to sell. These shills are trying to convince you the price will likely fall further and that you might as well just sell your shares now because the squeeze already happened. But again, all this really does is expose those shills for the shills that they are trying to convince you to make investing decisions that they're providing to you, aka trying to convince you to sell your shares. But interestingly, as Travis tweeted, he said, all Judge Zern has to do is cross correlate all the letters and find out the source of how these people are getting their false information. And then just subpoena those who are spreading false information or who the main sources are for that false information and throw the book at them or have them sing about their connections. All these shills are obviously getting their FUD from somewhere, so all you need to do is go to the source and find out who that source is working for. And that would be a brilliant way to expose these shills in court and find out exactly who's paying them to shill the shilling. So guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.